We're on, mate. We're on. Let's go, man. We've got a man. Check Sandu. Let's go, let's go. You're the first person on my podcast, mate, I've actually had to write stuff down for because there's that fucking much madness. So we'll start off with, you were born in the, the streets of England. Yeah. Uh, a place called Washington. Next to Hitchin, New- Hitchin, 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 next to Newcastle. No, Hitchin, Hertfordshire I was born in. Oh, was it no? Yeah. I thought you said what? Washington is where I live now. Oh, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hertfordshire. As a teenager then, obviously you've, you've rose through the ranks and won in Spain's you became one of Spain's biggest drug barons yeah um, you were arrested at gunpoint at Alicante airport where you then served over 11 years in two different prisons yeah <laughs> you were top boy in one of Europe's toughest prisons while in the jail in Spain though you've seen murders people stabbed you've been stabbed you're also involved in a successful prison escape yeah um, you've also had a best selling book the book's called from the King of Karachi to lockdown and Costa del Crime. But obviously, through all that madness as well, you've obviously turned on a new leaf. You're actually working with, well, it's a totally life changer, you're working with orphans in the Far East. Uh-huh. Which is amazing, man. So, obviously, when I knew you were coming on, I Googled you and read all your stuff, read a bit of your book. It is absolute fucking madness. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the start when uh-huh. all the, the fun and games began, your, your younger years. Yeah. Okay. From when? From when? When it started getting right messy. Oh, started getting right messy. It was... Uh, ah, lived in Huddersfield, yeah? Yep. Lived in Huddersfield, born in Hertfordshire. Moved to Huddersfield when I was four. And from then, I wasn't that bright. I had a stutter. I had, like, uh, disabilities. We had no money, this and that. So I was stealing and robbing from back then. And uh, my dad was quite strict. He never let me out. He didn't let me do this, didn't let me do that. And when I got nicked a few times, he went, right, okay, I'm taking you away from this environment, taking you to Newcastle. So that's what it started? They bought a shop up there. We bought a shop in Newcastle, Washington. So that was where we lived. And that's where we took a lot of abuse as well. I took a lot of racial abuse there in the 80s. Uh, it was like really hard work. Because we were the only brown faces in the whole village. And we got a hard time every day, daily hard time, you know. And going to work was like a proper hardship. You know, it was a nightmare. Nightmare for me. We used to get spat on, get caught packies, this and that. We're going to burn you down. Uh, people used to come in fucking pissed, wanting to fight me old man. And uh, they used to steal vodka, grow men. I was only 15 year old kid at the time. They used to come to the till, and I said, uh, they used to have a bottle of vodka down the stride. And I used to say, what about the vodka, this and that? And I said, well, what about it, yeah? I'll come around the counter and jump all over your fucking blackhead, yeah? And I wasn't in a position to do anything then, so we just took this shit for years. Took this shit for a few years, until I was about 22. Uh, we were spot on regular, got loads of fucking shit, yeah? And then I decided to train, and then I decided to fight boxing, yeah? So I started to train, started to fight, and then and then I made my move upwards. I made my move upwards. I got involved in the dormant scene. I got a job there, and I knew that there was a scope there for uh, drugs, for steroids. This is back in uh, the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Stories then were like sort of quite like so sort of new, and back then I thought, okay, you know, you know, I want to make my own money now. So I started going abroad, bringing back um, steroids from Spain, Greece, Turkey, nearby countries. You know, it was okay. It was okay. It was like doubling my money up on it. I wasn't making, you know. Like, it wasn't a lot, yeah? But, um, Enough to get by. I was doing okay, yeah. Doing okay. And then uh, I got involved with a couple of cousins of mine, and they said, listen, let's go further afield and do this on a big fucking scale. Pakistan. Karachi, yeah? Nobody wants to move to Karachi. Nobody wants to do business with them. Taliban, the Al-Qaeda. Everybody just stays away from Pakistan. And we were Indian Sikh, so we pretended we were Pakistanis. And we gave ourselves party names. Jet Khan was my name. And we went across there. 
and then we made the first fucking move. You know, we made the first fucking sort of move there, and it was good. It was good money. We made uh, thirty grand, thirty grand off one trip. Split three ways, ten grand a piece. Back in the early nineties, it was okay, and then from then, we moved around. Yeah, and that's where. So do you think all the violence at the start came from? You just had enough. Enough's enough. The violence was just through. Uh, the shit that used to. we used to take, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then I was thinking, my only way out of this, you know, is like sort of money, you Life know? Life crime. Yeah, yeah, it's crime. Mm -hmm. It's like beating these people, you know? Beating these people will give me a fucking daily fucking heartache, you know? Give my mum shit, give my dad shit. And so that's when I started to train, that's when I started to fight, that's when I started to box. And yeah, yeah, there comes, dealt a, with them all. Uh, there comes a time there's a breaking point where you go fuck this. Well, yeah, I've dealt with them all. Train them all, and then. Well, yeah, I've dealt with them yeah, all. Yeah. You know, did you take care of obviously the people who gave you abuse and names? Trapped them all down. Yeah, yeah. Charles Bronson effect, you know. <laughs> yes, wish. Yeah, I tracked them all down. Did you I have it in your mind? Are we not? Are we not the names yeah, down? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I fucked them all up. Apart from one, there's only one that's escaped me. I ain't gonna name them now. Yeah. But he's gonna get it, yeah. There's only one that's escaped. <laughs> so when you started, obviously, when you <laughs> he's kept going by. There's fucking one that's escaped me, yeah. But I'll get him, yeah. I won't so get him. when you started, obviously that life. When did when did you start going over to Spain? Because you were in one of Spain's to toughest Spain, deals. This was when um, I got barred as a doorman. I was working as a doorman in Newcastle, yeah. But they wouldn't give me a license under my name, so I was working under my cousin's name. Yeah, it was a legal name and. Incident happened and I broke someone's leg, yeah, on a night, yeah. Taking them down the stairs, ankle twisted, leg broke. They said I did it on purpose this night. Anyway, I did a runner. It was all in the news, on the radio, this and that. So I handed myself in. And then I was uh, a doorman in, like, do not employ this doorman, yeah. Do not let him in your bar and don't let him in your, do not employ him. My face was over everywhere. On uh, pub watch, so then I started working in Middlesbrough. I worked in Marvin, these bars down there with um, my second cousins who were working there. And then we got talking, and then we thought, okay, let's just do this trip to Pakistan. So the three of us hooked it all up, and we went to Pakistan, and then we did our first trip. And First time around, it was hard work, you know. It was really hard work. Nervous. Didn't know where to go, what to do, who to contact. It was proper hard work, but it was done. And we made some good money out of it. And then you went to Alicante, it was armed response, it surrounded the plane. Well, that was after a few trips, yeah. We did... How many trips? I did about uh, about eight or nine trips, yeah. Mm -hmm. 60 grand on each trip. Because I've read in your book somebody grasped you in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got grasped because I went th through Alicante because Newcastle, it got stopped. Um, the suitcases got searched, this and that. And I told if I went to collect the suitcases, I'd get nicked. So I left it. So I thought I'd take a different route, which was Spain. I knew Spain quite well because I, used, I knew a few people there. So went through Spain. But I went through Alicante Airport, and then they were waiting for me with guns. Boom! And that's where you got your sentence. And that's that's when I got nicked. Where was it? Where was the prison in Spain? Funkalent. And in that prison, there was it's obviously full of terrorists. But when you, while you were in that prison, yeah, you seen people getting murdered as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were stabbing people. This is all in yeah. your book. Yeah. This is all in your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I had to stab them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to stab me. Yeah. Stuff, but you rose, you, you rose up the ranks very quickly over yeah, there. Yeah, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. To get the stripes, to get For somebody it. who can't speak, you know, Spanish. I learned Spanish. Top security wing, they put me in. They thought because of the amount of the money I was dealing with, yeah, they thought I had like uh, land, maybe a yacht, property in Spain. Top security, they put me in, yeah, and so I was in there for a remand for a year and a half. Because they were trying to search, thinking I've got money there. They wanted to take all the money off me, but I had no money in Spain. So in this meantime, top security wing is where I want. That was a punishment wing. Tough. That's a punishment wing. Yeah, yeah, horrible. Yeah, three hours, twenty-four hours locked up. No, 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 no. 
you're free. You're free. But that's the worst thing about it because people want to kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it just knives you know, or guns? Or? You know, I wish it was 23 hour lockup yeah. because then you can't get stabbed, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a free for all, basically. It was like a Royal free Rumble. Free for all, yeah, yeah. They're just all on it, you know? The Spanish authorities, the laws there, uh, health and safety. You can walk a joint there in the yard and you can smoke joint, you can smoke weed in the yard. The screws just leave you alone. Was there a gym? <clears throat> There's a gym that I made, yeah. But there was an outside one as well, yeah. Outside gym, which we could use once a week. But then we all had to get searched down, patted down, this and that. And even the screws weren't up to it. They used to say, okay, this week cancelled. You know, it was up to them, yeah. So that was just once a week. And you said the population was 1,600? 1,600 in the whole jail, yeah. How many but How many officers? How many screws? The screws on the other side, I don't know, yeah. But on my side, there was about 12 for 40 heads. So if it kicked off, was that cover or was it just... On mine, let them fight? there was 40 heads of mine, yeah. 40 heads of mine, 12 screws. But if it's a heavy kit off and then screws will come Everywhere. through the wings, yeah. What about the, the prison breakout? How did how Because it was successful, apparently. Yeah. Tell me about that. Karim, yeah, the Algerian, the ghost. He was a cocaine dealer. He had contacts all over, Portugal, Algeria. And he worked in the little shop. It was at the corner, the corner of the jail, next to the big wall. And uh, he said to me, a few weeks we got talking, he went, listen, yeah, I'm going to do a nine, yeah? He went, you're going to get a nine as well, yeah? He went, listen, let's just both go, Okay. And he told me the story, yeah? He's going to dig a hole. There was a refrigerator. He showed me the hole he was <laughs> digging. He was digging it slowly with a spoon, yeah? Short shank redemption was, style. This is, yeah. <laughs> I know you love me, but it's true, yeah? He was digging it with a fucking spoon, yeah? And uh, I was uh, looking at the hole, and then I looked at the wall. He went, it's just this wall. Once we go through this, we just need to run down, avoid getting shot off the screw, <laughs> avoid getting shot off the screw from the top, and then... Once we're at the other wall, we could hop that one. And I got my car waiting. I was thinking, I don't know, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I don't know, yeah? I went, listen, I said, I'll cover your ass, yeah? Mm -hmm. I said, I'll cover your fucking ass, yeah? Okay? And you're right, okay, fair enough. There was a German dude as well at the time. He didn't want a part of it because his brother was in as well. And... He didn't want to escape without taking his br brother, so carrying me was on his own. Anyway, he used to bang, he used to bang on this fucking, uh, bang on this wall, yeah. My cell, directly opposite. So I used to play my music on my radio loud and purpose, yeah. So the screws, they couldn't hear. Anyway, he was banging, 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 boom, 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 boom. And then um, the day they escaped, he went, right, listen, the hole's done. He had like a fridge. What well, wasn't working? covered the hole it was like um you know this <laughs> 60s style jail <laughs> really, yeah if you think about it, yeah how he did it yeah it was so good how he did it anyway he took the fucking hole he took the fucking hole he showed me the hole anyway you want to come i went no i went no anyway he was allowed to stay in the shop at the corner to do the stock take an hour after everybody else so we were all in association at the time, yeah? We were association from six to seven o'clock. And so he says he's going to do the breakout in that time, yeah? And so he told me to stage a fight, yeah? Stage a fight, so all the screws land, and they're all on my bit, and so he can do a run for it. I went, right, okay. So we staged it, yeah? Half seven, I think it was the time, yeah? Half six or half seven, one of the two. Anyway, we synchronised the watches, yeah. I mean, the German, I mean, all right. And then we started an argument over um, TV. There was a shitty little fucking TV cord and fucking metal and plastic. You couldn't even see the fucking screen, yeah? <laughs> and then we were arguing over what to watch. So I argued with him and this and that. So I threw a chair at him. Plastic chair, he threw one back. And so we just started a fight, yeah? We started a fight and then boom, the whistles rang out and then all the screws rang. Exactly on half six, half seven, I don't exactly time, yeah. Anyway, Karim, done one. Boom. He was away. He was away. And at a time, then we heard some shots. Bam, bam, bam. 
And they're all right. Escape. And the screws just fucking turn around. Back heel. Boom. Right? They're back heeled. And they were gone. Anyway. Five minutes later, they come back. They're all right. Everybody lock up. Bang up. Yeah? We thought, all right. And I went, what's happened? Has he got away or what? Screws didn't say a word, yeah? We knew he got away. Yeah? I was in mixed feelings at the time, yeah, thinking I should have fucking gone with him, you know? Yeah. And, uh... Is he still... Did they ever get caught? He got caught again. He got grassed up. He he went to Portugal. Mm -hmm. He sent me a postcard. <laughs> signed the ghost. <laughs> signed the ghost. Yeah? Because that's what he called himself, the ghost, yeah? He sent me a postcard. The ghost. He went, take care, Chet. Nice one, brother. Blah, blah, blah. The ghost. Anyway, he come back to Spain to collect a debt. Collect, a, you know, a debt. Why come back to he Spain? He got grassed up. He got grassed up, and that was. Why come back to Spain though? The place you just know, fucking left. Dollar. He was all dollar there. Yeah. Thirty or grand. So what did they get? How much more did he put on his sentence? He'll do that and then get more for the escape. Is he still yeah. in? Yeah. Is he still in? No, no, no. This was back in 1990, 1999. He'll be out now. Do you? Do you? But I might be even dead. Yeah. You know? we'll do you? Do you not contact anymore? No, no. no. Do you? Part of you miss not doing that escape. For the buzz? No, I don't want to get shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you fit him through the hole? Shot. How big was the hole? Well, you know what? He had bald, you know? He was a little skinny kid, you know? I'm quite big. Yeah. You know, I'm easy to shoot. You're easy to shoot. <laughs> That's fucking I'm easy madness. to shoot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you, so what made you... So when you were in, involved in the life of crime, because oh, everything you've been involved in until... And then I started reading you've been doing work with orphans. Yeah. I was like, for fuck, I was like, yeah. that's a bit yeah. extreme, yeah. so tell me about that yeah. as well, how you... Okay, that's all about, um, you know, you know, I've done a lot of bad in my life. Yes, yeah? I've read. Yeah? But, I, but like, I haven't hurt anybody that's mm -hmm. never had a due, mm -hmm. yeah, come into them, yeah? No, so you're not a bully? No innocence involved in this, yeah? Everybody I've hurt, they've had a due, yeah? They've had a come into them. And I just feel I've done a lot of bad, and I'm still here, I'm still alive. So I should help. I should help the unfortunate. Do you, obviously, when you help people, you yeah. feel good. Do you think yeah. that's to try and repair a bit of damage that's happened, maybe mentally, physically? Maybe to, it to is. Do I good? don't know how. I, you know, I don't know really how to explain that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, do you feel better for it? I just feel I have to do that. I don't feel better for it actually. Tell the truth, I just feel I need to do it. You know, it's a calling. You know, you're, you're honest. I think it's calling to me. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, you, I'm in a position now to do that. I don't work. I don't have a job, and you know I should do that. I think mm -hmm. I should do it. But that. doing good is good. It's a good yeah, thing. And to yeah. be honest about it, your book yeah, is yeah. it's a pure honest. There's no fiction in that. No, that no. is a book that definitely no. something you should read because it is fucking mental. Yeah. Yeah. It's the ghost, the prison yeah. break. So yeah. in Spain, while you were in Spain, it was one of Spain's biggest drug busts as well. That was yeah, uh, the biggest seizure. Pharmaceutical drugs, yeah. Because mm. pharmaceutical drugs is a class A in Spain, so it's just up there with heroin class and coke. Class A, yeah, yeah. So 250,000 tablets and yeah. 60,000 ampules. But that, and steroids. The street value, they're millions of pounds worth. Well, half a year. Yeah. yeah. So and that's where the sentence came from. Yeah. But you also done a sentence in England. Yeah, after that. This is after you came out of Spain? Yeah, yeah. I was out a year and I got involved with a firm in Gateshead. Next to Newcastle, uh, we were controlling brothels and drugs, securing areas. And it's just, I come out with a sentence in Spain, I just thought I was invincible, you know? Because I came through that, you know, I was stabbed there twice. I didn't think I was gonna make it. Half the people there had AIDS. I had a fight with people with AIDS. And I thought I was gonna die there, Shit. yeah? I thought I was gonna die. And when I came out of that, I thought... Fearless? Yeah, I thought, fucking, I'm King Kong. How, did they, how King the fuck Kong. did they all have AIDS? Injecting, needles, needles. Injecting. In Spain, yeah, um, the sentencing works like this. In England, if you get caught for four or five burglaries, yeah, you might get two year, one year, 18 month, two year, one year, 18 month, but they will run concurrent. So we do two year, yeah. yeah? In Spain, they add them all up. So there's people there doing burglaries and they've got 25 year. Shit. You know? So What's the biggest sentence in Spain? 
I met somebody who was doing 280 years. In Spain? Yeah, 280 years. I thought it was just America. No, 280 years. The people are killed. 30 years for each one. Fuck's <laughs> sake. And this was people. And this was people in the same. Well, this is true, yeah. And this was people in the same wing as you. Yes, yes, yes. They're in the same place as me. What the fuck is that? Yeah. In 60, 90, so that's about over ten people he's killed. Well, yeah, more than that. I don't know what he was doing. And but there, but there. Fucking like Hannibal Lecter. It's all fucked up, yeah. There's one guy who I met there. He got thirty year for the murder, and then he burnt the body twenty year on top, so he got fifty year. So you kill somebody, you get thirty year. And you burn the body, they get an extra 20 years. So they've not just given the one sentence. 50 years. What made you get out of the UK? What now? Yeah. But I feel them. I've been out of the UK now, yeah, for about a year or so. Um, the police don't let things lie with me, really. Um, the public don't really like me, a lot of them. In England? Yeah. Is that through the violence that you've caused? No, well, that's through... Jealousy through this, through that. They still think I'm involved in drugs and I'm not involved in drugs. I ain't involved in anything no more. And they've grossed me up and my house is getting searched and it's putting pressure on my mum and dad. So I just thought I'd chip, you know. It's better for everybody's life. I thought I'd chip, yeah. Yeah. You you know? Do you miss the madness? Have an easy life. Do you miss the, the craziness? Are, are, you, are you more calm? The craziness, the craziness is okay. Um, I come back every few weeks. And I hook up with uh, Jamie Kerr, and we have a week of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a week of craziness, and that's okay. You are know? you back in the UK every time? I'm fine after that. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you based, Cyprus? <laughs> and I'm fine after that. Cyprus, Lanaka. Yeah, is yeah. it nice? Lanaka is beautiful. Yeah, on the beach, got palm trees. It's so chilling. Uh, oh, it's excellent. Do you get any hassle from police that are over there? Do they know who you uh, are? Well, yeah, I did last time, yeah. Because somebody said I was uh, carrying drugs in my body. Somebody phoned up the airport. This is the last time I went, six weeks ago. They said I was carrying drugs in my body. Anyway, they stopped me at the airport. They wanted to x-ray me, do this, do that. Anyway, I did play ball. I said, like, why? Why am I getting this shit? Anyway, I didn't play ball with them. But they handcuffed me, arrested me, took me to the hospital, x-rayed me, nothing in me, and then they let me go, you know? But this is just through people through here, from just, England. Is that just to harass you, to piss you off? Yeah, just to piss me off. Just to cause me inconvenience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think... They think I'm all bad still, you know? I'm not all bad no more, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't finish with that life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm done with it. But there's a lot of people that don't really get that. But do you think when you come back, it's, it's easy to get sucked back into it? No, 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 because now I won't put myself in that position, you know, oh. to get that sort of jail. But if somebody tries to test you, you know, with the young boys, people always try and test. Test with what? Just if somebody try to rise up the ranks themselves and well, always them, try and... Let them rise, let them rise, what I say. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you, yeah? <laughs> Good luck to you, yeah? <laughs> so you, <laughs> you did boxing and that as well because you can fucking yeah, scrap. Yeah, you can, yeah, did you ever yeah. do like, tie fighting? Or, yeah. Did you do yeah, all that, everything? Yeah. Yeah. Is that to protect yourself, obviously, in the younger years? Uh, younger years, not as much. Then I just used to be more of a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Steroids I used to take myself. Do you think they played a part in the effect of your mindset? I think so. I Do think you think, think so. they fucked with your I mindset? Think so. I think so, I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Because uh, they do uh, make you, you know, you want it, you want it, you want it. Mm -hmm. Are you buzzing when you take it? yeah. Mm -hmm. and gives you a buzz especially the amount I was taking back then How, what was your, your biggest? my biggest I was about 18 stone my bench press was 210 kilo mm -hmm. uh, 210 kilo bench but I was taking then 21 injections a week What's your, what are you supposed three to take? Day. about one, one a week two. About one and two. a week? yeah, yeah. you're taking 20? 21 a week and 10 tablets a day fuck's sake but yeah. I was immense. My power was immense, you know. I was strong. I was just like, you know, strong, aggressive male, you know. Yeah. Were you feared? Yeah. 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 Did you enjoy that fear, though? Did you, empowerment? <laughs> At the time, I look back now, yeah. Uh, I was a bit of a dickhead, yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, but at the time, 
You know, I did have that fucking power, that force in me. Mm -hmm. But now I've still got that in me now, you know. I would never lose. I think it's in the, the DNA. No, I'm not in yeah. that now, you know. But back then I was young and I think I needed that drug effect to give me that. We spoke because, about, I, yeah. because I didn't have it naturally, you know. Because we spoke about, obviously, before the podcast started, yeah. that that anger and fear it is a mask and we, we portray it. There's so many people involved in violence and crime and they yeah. think it's the way to go, but it yeah. is a mask to yeah. draw that fear into yeah. people. It's to feel that importance. It's to feel yeah. that I've got something. But yeah. when you get old... Let me like, tell you something, yeah? Mm -hmm. Every job that's done, yeah? Every bank robbery, every murder, every hit, or this, gangsters are going to do a hit, yeah? Mm -hmm. They never do it straight sober. They do it on drink and cocaine. Yeah. Right? Every hit is drunk under the influence of narcotics. Yeah, because to do it straight, yeah, is a very hard thing to do. Take some balls. It's a very hard thing to do straight, yeah, because you're like thinking, okay, innocent people can get hurt here yeah, and this and that, and there's a lot of things gonna go through your mind. It's a conscience, mate. So you just drink. Take okay. Yeah, if you're the buzz and the balls. And then you're fucking on it. Yeah, you're you know? doing anything. And then you want to make the move. Yeah. And then you want to make the move. You're saying, like, let's fucking go. Yeah. You know, let's to pump yourself up. To let's go. But then you get in. But that's how it's always done. And that's how the mistakes are made. Mm -hmm. but it, that's yeah. how the mistakes are made by people who are drink, who are drunk and high. And they fuck the job up sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's that, that is the way I like yeah. As you get yeah. older, you've even said it yourself. Yeah. It is, it's not really regret, but you kind of grow a conscience and you kind of go, you kind of overthink the matters because it's a snowball effect. As soon as you hurt one person, you're not just hurting them, you're hurting their family, your family, going to prison. It's so many people get infected, yeah. affected by hurting one people. Do you yes, know what I mean? And yes, yes, yes. The yes. fact that you have changed and the fact that you have wrote your book, obviously, yeah. you still look as if you've got the madness. I, I don't kind of want to say too much, you know what I mean? But you, you probably still got that presence where you don't give a fuck, you could probably just go yeah. in an instant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that. Yeah. Have you ever tried to work on help? Did you, and is, I know the jails in the like UK, they've got psychologists and they've got yeah. programmes where they can work down uh -huh. from uh -huh. like your category to... Yeah. Did they have that in Spain? No, 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 no. You don't get nothing in Spain. They don't know. no health and safety in Spain. What about England, though? Did you work on... Like in England? Tell you the truth in England, yeah? I got contacted by a few groups saying, uh, you're like a good su subject to speak to young offenders, mm -hmm. yeah? Tell them your story. Tell them, you know, it's not all good, you know? You've had the same feelings that they've had of the rage and the anger. You want the dollar, you want the money, you want the pussy, you want fucking drugs, bam, yeah. bam, bam, yeah? You've been through it and you've seen it and you've done it and talk to these people. Tell them it's, you know, it's not the way to go down. And really I thought about that and, uh, and in a way I would like to do that. Why don't you? I know, I'm, yeah, I know. I think I know, it might be the, a next step. To help other people, yeah. especially if you're doing office, I think if you go to it the prison... It might be the next step, you know? Yeah, and because it isn't the way to do it, you know? We all feel that shit, you know? We all feel that, you know? We want to be a fucking gangster pulling out the guns, the knives, the drugs, the women, the cocaine, the pussy, the dollar. But they know? think it's a way of life, but the majority of people yeah, are yeah, involved yeah. in that. I don't yeah. reach 40. But then you get jail or you're yeah. going to get stabbed or shot, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it is, but that probably is a step <coughs> for because you've, you've lived the life. You seriously yeah. fucking lived it. You've yeah. went through some madness. Yeah. But to try and educate the younger ones to realise, look, this isn't a life. Yeah. See if you could go back in the I past. Know, but it depends how they take me, you know, because there's some young ones now that are full of fucking that. And if they give it that to me in the classroom, I'll just fucking yeah, slap crack you, you know? up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll like, fuck you, and I'll walk straight out. I know, I'll but to make out. the change, you can't do that. I know, but I'll walk straight out. Do you, you know? think that's something you need to work on then? Still the anger issues and still maybe... Really, I don't want money for this, you know? I want uh -huh. to do it for free. Yeah. You know, they've said, okay, it starts at uh, £18,000 a year. The salary, I said, listen, it's not about the money if I do this, you know? If I do it, I do it, yeah? But uh, I can't be dealing with, like, kids giving me shit back. But you know they will. 16, 17 year olds. I know, but what... what Know. You know, 16, 17 year olds come on, But man. for you to teach them, that's something I know, but that's like on. quite hard to do, you know. If you could change the If they said to me, it's okay, I'll give them a slap, I'd say, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you're into the jail to change their life, but you're going to slap them. <laughs> yeah, they didn't slap, they didn't slap, man. See if you could go back in the past and change it, would you? Would you change the past? No. No? No. No. Not at all. No? No, I fucking loved it. Did you? Fucking love it. It's been a roller coaster. Is it? 
Do you think you've got more <laughs> madness in you? Yeah. Fucking love it. Do you love like the I've got fool? stories yeah. what nobody else has got. Yeah. And that's what I like, you know? Mm. I like to like turn up somewhere and say, okay, I've been here, I've done that, you know? Do people believe you or do they think he's just, fucking, fucking he's, just, he's just fucking he's just he's just fucking crazy well no I ain't crazy you know you know I'm fucking real yeah, yeah. you know I'm real I'm bigging it up I ain't saying it's fucking brilliant but you know I've done it and I've been there I've fucking seen it and I want people to read about it in the book and I've got a lot of things off that as well you know I can help a lot of people I did help a lot of people and I want to help a lot more people. Where did the book come from? Where did it, how did it start? The book was from uh, Facebook stories. I just started putting a few stories up, this and that. And my mates were going, all right, check, brilliant stories, brilliant stories, write more, write more. Okay, I wrote more. Put them up every three, four, five days. And then uh, a publisher, he got in contact with me, said, listen, we can make a book about this, yeah? Go into detail about it put all the stories in order, and now we can make a move. And he did, Michael Carroll. How long did it take to write? Uh, to write, not long, not long. The, the stories, I typed them on the phone, you know? I had to type them on the iPhone, and I got big hands, yeah? So there was a lot of spelling mistakes, and uh, I had to go back a lot of times. Uh, but it took me about an hour and a half a story, an hour a story. It didn't take that long, but the next book I will do, I'm going to do it right, probably. Not Facebook stories, you know? Proper book. You don't want to put a lot more into yeah. it. Detail of my feelings and my emotions into it. My emotions aren't in this. It's just like uh, my movement. Yeah. It's just my movements involved in this. Hmm. You know, it's quite uh, down to earth. It's quite fast. It's how I talk. Because once you start reading it, you can't stop. Yeah, as it's yeah, fast, it's, yeah, it's, it's rapid. Yeah, so do yeah. you think you would talk a bit more how you were feeling that when you were doing these kind of things? That's what I will write. And I think that's what will time. help people more. Yeah. Then Because when people read that, yeah. when people read these books, when yeah. people watch these films, they want yeah. to become a gangster. Yeah. They think it's cool. They think it's great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that the, the ghost story and the... I know. I mean, you tell it's it, we're laughing, but it's fucking I know. nuts. It's such a shame. Do you know what I mean? A guy who's <laughs> been 230 in the jail for <laughs> doing over 10... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. it's, it's just crazy. It's There's like, so many hard luck stories in jail, you know, yeah. where you see people. Most of the people in jail aren't even meant to be there. Murders, murders even, I would say... 80% of murders were, were not meant to be. It's just an accident. It's just like a circumstance that went wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've met loads of murders in the jail and they've all said to me, I don't really mean to do that, you know. It's just... Just you know, anger just, at the time. You know, it just happened at a time. 30 year. Yeah. This is a... And it, 30 year. Do you think... The There's very few people who plan a murder. You know, mm -hmm. there's about five percent of people who actually plan a murder. I think the rest are through rage. All, all, all the rest are fuck ups. It's just fuck ups through drink, through being high, yeah, hitting somebody the wrong way, doing something the wrong way, picking up a wrong fucking. Because if tool. they were sober, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Things can get you ironed know? out and sorted. And they ain't them type of people, and yet you get a massive sentence and it ruins your life. Do you think the crime in UK is get bigger? It's get worse. The crime in UK. Uh, there's a lot of shit in the UK jails, you know? There's a, we got a lot of shit there. Uh, people who were there for drugs, for taking drugs, I don't think they should be in jail, really, because yeah. you're only taking drugs. Right it's here. mental health problems, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of mental health. You're not health. taking drugs, and there's people that are, like, done for drink driving, dangerous driving, death by driving, blah, blah, blah. These people as well, I don't think they should be put in an environment criminals yeah. with uh, drug dealers, rapists, killers, gangsters. Because, yeah? Yeah. because that isn't their world, yeah? And a lot of these people I've seen them go down mm -hmm. because they're normal guys, you know? They've just had a few drinks. Done something stupid. Done something stupid and then you get thrown in with gangsters and drug dealers. And actually and some of them get hooked on, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, then... yeah, yeah. And then they fuck up. I think it's the wrong way to deal with them. Mm -hmm. It's the wrong way to deal with them. Just deal with the hardcore, the but hardcore it, way. But it's money, isn't it? We all need the hardcore It's money way. for the government. It's money to get people in prisons. I think it's like 50 grand a year that each cellmate each cell gets, yeah. each inmate gets. Yeah. It's a lot of money. And the, the jails are packed. UK, they're fucking packed. And you're right, there's a lot of people. I think they're maybe going to... St 
I don't know if they're going to stop the 12 months <coughs> 12 month sentences I think they're going to maybe scrap that and do something different that was just really? talk yeah I think so because you're right a lot of people who are vulnerable who have made mistakes yeah. that can be fixed yes. a lot of, you know yourself a lot of people yeah. in the jail are 80-90% fucking intoxicated with some yeah. crazy stuff yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean yeah. a lot of people yeah. can't handle their sentence so yeah. if you're that if you're tough or whatever people can't handle the fact that they need to hide and numb the pain when they're in there because they know they've fucked up do you yeah. know what I mean because I know you've yeah. battled yeah. drugs you've been on all sorts of drugs as well yeah yeah. yeah. The drug in the world yeah Heroin I took in Spain. Mm-hmm. The first time I took that, yeah? But there, but there I thought I needed it, you know? They were all in it there, yeah? Smoking it, I didn't inject it, yeah? Mm. I smoked it. And uh, it did give you an escape. It gives you an escape, yeah? For a few hours, you're floating around on a pink foot, you know, on a pink cloud. And you're away from there and you feel nice. You know, it's the only time in jail mm. you actually feel good, you know? You're floating about. You're in your cell, you're high, and then okay, you come down. You what, come what, down. How do you how do you pay for the shit in, over in Spain? How does that work? Uh, you got to buy it. Uh, it comes in on uh, visits in Spain. People there, if you've got a wife or a girlfriend, you get a congenial visit, yeah? So you can fuck your wife and your Is girlfriend. Is that right in Spain? And she puts it, be pussy, yeah. You wouldn't mind it in 230 years, mate, if you're getting it's pussy okay. left in Spain. <laughs> Spain's okay, man. Spain's okay. Look what it is, yeah? Spain, Spain have got the right idea, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because there's not a lot of rape that happens in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside the prisons. Yeah, yeah, because you can get a wife and you get a girlfriend there. In English jails, in American jails, you don't get that. So Everybody's that's angry. where they rape. Yeah. That's where they rape, you know? Yeah. That's how... That's what they fuck ass. Oh, angry and fucking frustrated, yeah. yeah. They fuck ass. But if you could, but if you know you got your girl coming next month, you how many times? Once a month. You're interested in looking at her hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once a month. Is that once a month? Once a month you get this shit. So they've obviously brought it through the fanny or their ass. And they whatever. bring it through and then they put it up the ass. Boom, get sold and it's there. It's there available. Fuck's sake, man! I didn't yeah. know that. I did that in Spain. Yeah, it's all good shit. <laughs> How long were you on the heroin for? Uh, four months. Oh, four months? Yeah, but I went from, I was 16 and a half stone. I went in to 12 and a half stone in three months. Shit. Stop training. It shrinks your stomach. Heroin, it shrinks your stomach. You can't shit, yeah? You have a shit once every fucking six days. And it shrinks your stomach. You go grey. You don't eat. <sighs> It's just fucked Did up. Did you lose yourself? Was yeah, that, was that the lowest up, point man. in your life? Yeah. And that was uh, 1999. Four months as a lot, but... on the millennium, yeah. What made you change it straight away? On the millennium, yeah. Yeah. 1999, yeah. The millennium, boom. December 31st. I was on fucking smack. I was 12 and I was stone. I wasn't training. Looking at a nine stretch. And I was in a bad place. And I looked on myself in the mirror. I was a stare at me. You know, mm. you know, I used to be a top kid. I used to be a top kid. Now I'm a 12 and a half stone fucking baggage. Did you start looking at more? a fucking night stretch? Did you start getting lost? People lose respect for you. And then I just stopped it. And then I thought, fuck this, this isn't me, man. This isn't fucking me. I ain't like the rest of the fucking shit here because that's what they are. That's what all they are. How hard was it to stop? Hard. Hard. That- yeah, hard. But I fucking did it. Well done, man. Boom. After that, I thought, fucking never again, I'll take it. Was that before your sentence? Was this on remand? On remand in Spain, yeah. Yeah. But so, so, so I packed it all in, got my head round it, I started to train, I started to eat, the food was shit. The food was that fucking shit. They used to put the um, frozen racks of meat on the floor. If you had AIDS, yeah, you would get a job in the kitchens, yeah? Fox. They'd give you a cushy job. But they used to get a... Uh, clots of blood and they used to spit what? and they used to spit that into the fucking food and stews I knew this yeah but it's okay you can't catch AIDS that way anyway yeah from, uh, from saliva them spitting it blood no going through no so it's got to get into your bloodstream yeah yeah so that was cool you fucking know fucking disgusting man yeah but that's cool yeah it's just something you got to deal with yeah and, why would uh, they give them a job working with food because if you got AIDS they give you a cushy number and but they but they are there thinking, okay, I've got AIDS, I'm dying here. Yeah? So I want everybody else to fucking die. Yeah. Yeah? 
It's that mentality. I want everybody else to fucking die. That's fucking nuts, man. That's nuts. We're talking, we dealt with that. And uh, dealt with that, and I ate the food, the food was fucking shit. Dealt with it, and I pretended I was a Muslim. For better food? Because, yeah, because I, because I checked out a couple of, I cooked out the Algerians, yeah? They used to get rabbit twice a week. And I went, we never get rabbit, yeah? What did you just get? Rabbit, rabbit. What did you just get? You used to get fucking shit. Just stew, just fucking veg, Water. veg stew. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Mm. With bread, stale bread. Yeah, I thought right, okay, I fancy be like rabbit. And then uh, I said, listen, I'm a Muslim, you know. They didn't question me, and they, okay, they put me on the Muslim menu, and uh, I got all the rabbit in chicken. We used to get once a week, and I was a head honcho at the time then at the gym. Yeah, in the gym. In my wing, extra chicken we used to get. They used to keep it for me. The gypsies, the gypsies, they're the ones that used to serve the food. So they always used to call me over Indio. They call me, yeah, because I'm from Indian. Indio, they call me. And so I used to go and collect all the excess fucking meat, chicken, and put it outside my window on the bars, yeah. It got hot sometimes, yeah. Sweaty, smelly, but if it's not got mold on it, I'm going to eat it, you know. How many did you meet up? Did you become? Did you still keep in contact with people when you came out? I did a yeah, did at first, uh, but then I stopped it because they were just needy. Yeah, yeah, they were doing big sentences. You know, they were doing uh, so forty what, years, what money sent over, and well, money, other things. And I'm thinking, I just thought oh, I just want to move on from this life. I know I'm a bit of a cunt for doing that, for not helping them afterwards. Yeah, did help them at first. For the first six, six to nine months, but then they started to get a bit needy on me, and I thought, "Listen, yeah, but especially if you're trying to go on your new life, and especially if you've got somebody yeah. doing fucking a hundred a year, yeah, do you know what I mean? You couldn't keep, no, yeah, you can't. Do you know you what can't. I mean? You can't but do burn it. Burn yourself man. out. I felt sorry for him, but I thought, "Fuck it, you know, fuck it." I done my bit. I think. When know? did you start making the changes to calm down and try and get away? As soon as I got out on my second sentence. Uh, Eng the English one my second sentence yeah that was in England what was yeah. that four and a half years six years yes yes seven I got then yeah. seven year seven and year and then when you came out after that sentence I thought that's me done enough's enough that's me done yeah no more no more for me and you've been out since for for 11 years fine yeah well done and that's yeah Good man. Been arrested a few times <laughs> but never got a sentence <laughs> been arrested it's all been a false Awful shit, yeah. Do you still get a lot of harassment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lodge. sure, sure. Do you? Yeah. You do your nothing? Yeah, sure. It's easy to get me nicked, you know? Mm -hmm. But do you kind of blame them, or do you, because of the life you were involved in, do you, they think you'll never change, they think you'll always be that bad I know, boy? but it's not the police. It's the public who are fucking me up, you know? It's the people that I know. It's that haters it's family. It's them, yeah, haters that are like, still phoning them up saying, he's doing this, you know, he's doing that. And I'm not doing anything, you know? I don't fuck all. But it's just them that can't get away with me. What's the worst crime you've ever seen? In, like in prison or outside? Have you seen heavy stuff? In, in there, because I know there was murders. Did you have, was you seen them? Does people, if they do the murders in the prison, do yeah. they get a sentence added on? Yeah, or how does yeah, it work yeah, there? yeah, 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 yeah. If you do a murder, you get added on, yeah. Uh... I've seen loads of shit there, man. And Spain? Yeah. How many? In Spain. England, not as much. Mm -hmm. England is a it's bit low-key. It's because you're locked up, though, 23 yeah. hours. It's a bit low-key here, yeah, but Spain, free and open, you know? See people there get slashed up, cut up, killed up. Was there much suicide in there? Suicide, yeah. Three. Three in the time I was there. Still a lot, eh? Yeah. Especially if it was only 40 in your wing. Yeah. Wing. There was one time... In this country, uh, it was a friend of mine, yeah, his half brother. He was in jail for burglary, this and that, but he was on the pills. He was taking pills off of like this guy I know as well. And he couldn't pay him, so he was getting a bit heavy on him. And then, anyway, he got a word back on me. So, listen, will you have a word with this guy? Yeah, to take it easy on his bro, blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, it got. The word got back on me a bit late, yeah? And in the meantime, he tried to kill himself. He slit his throat, yeah? He slit his throat, but like he didn't die. He 
didn't die. He was in the hospital a couple of days, come back out, stitches. Anyway, the heat, it was still on him. So then after that, he hung himself, right? He hung himself, and the stitches, they all came open. And so his throat was all open, yeah? Everything was like hanging out. And his brother, who I know is a mate of mine, they had to leave him hanging because you have to get a family member to come to see your body first, you know? They can't take you down. And the prison? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. So sake. he had to come and see it. That's some, that would fuck your mindset. That and, but your mind. really I got to him a bit late. You know, I got to him a bit late because I knew the person who was buying the drugs off and I just had to, had to have a word with him to say, listen, take it easy on my man. And he would have done, but word got a bit late and he was... Shit. Oh, what know. about, what's the plans for the future? Future properties I've got now in England. Mm -hmm. Uh, rental income I do, CBD oil. Yes, let's talk which about that. Is the new way forward, you yes. know? It's, uh, you know, it's massive. It's massive. Yeah. I'm working on this. In Newcastle and in Cyprus? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cyprus, Greece, Cyprus, Greece and Israel. Mm -hmm. These are three countries we want to do. And, um, but it's big here through my friends, Brian Cheriton in Middlesbrough, Jamie Kerr, He's doing it in Scotland. He's a sole agent. What website can you get this on? A website or anything they can contact? Jamie Kerr's site right. in Scotland, if you mm. want it, contact him. And this is good for arthritis and... Arthritis, Crohn's, if you've got tumours, if you've got anything wrong with you, you know, if you've got anything wrong with you, yeah? We've got... we got it. Mm -hmm. we got it. And this is legit, everything up? It's up all straightforward. It's all bang on. Yeah. It's all bang on, yeah? But it's like... Um, I would say we've got about a year on it, yeah, before the government puts a cap on it, yeah. We can sell 1,500 milligram, yeah, at the minute, but I think when the government gets a hold of it, they're going to put a cap on it, 400 milligram, because they still need to sell their pharmaceuticals, you know, mm. because all these companies are going to go out of business if we do this. Yeah. What this, about is, this is amazing, you know, it's amazing. It's helping so many people. Now, you know, um, the orphanages I do this, uh, CBD oil. Now I just want to help people, you know? It's like a switch, you know? It's a turnaround. Yeah. It's a turnaround. Do you feel better for that? Yeah, of course I do. Mm -hmm. And what about I the do. books? I know you want to write, you want to bring yeah. this out and make a movie of this? Yeah. A movie. I've been in contact with uh, Jamie McLean. Lenny McLean. Lenny McLean. Yeah. That's the, the, the governor. Boy, that's the, the governor. There was a film out about him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's helping me with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if anybody else... Wants to give me a hand. Mm -hmm. Got the script. Because the stuff in this is... Yeah. Is there any cool. fiction? Nothing? All real? It's all real, man. It's a real deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> is there... <laughs> and you want to write another book? Yes. I'm going to do my full story. Now I've got time. In Cyprus, I'm going to do my full story. It's a bit hard, yeah? Uh, because my old man as well, he was a bit hard to me as well, yeah? But really, you know, he's still alive and I don't really want to put him down in a bad light as well, you know? Mm hmm uh, but he was good. You know, he gave me a few lickings, yeah? Yeah. You know, I think I deserved about 30% of them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so you don't want to talk, you don't want to talk about <laughs> that in your book? Would you not well, talk about that in your book? This is the thing, you Was know? it upset them? This is the thing, yeah? yeah. But uh, but it's part of who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. It's real it's life. Maybe, There's nothing you, know? you can hide from, is well, it? Well, it's lickings, you know? Uh -huh. Lickings make you a man. Mm -hmm. you got to take a licking and mm -hmm. get a man. And that's what you can't have it. All, you know, it's not one way traffic, man. Was this for a young age? You know, it's a dual carriageway. Was this for a young age? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's what made you tough and fucking up for it? And one of the reasons? Yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I've seen the shit, you know? Yeah. I've seen the shit, I've seen the hardship, I've seen no money, second hand clothes. That's how I, that's what I used to wear as a child, a stutter I had as a child. How did you fix that? The stutter? Mm -hmm. The stutter, the stutter I've still got now, if you notice it. You can't, can't, can't you? notice it, now. The stutter I've still got now, but that's just confidence, I said. Yeah. Confidence. Do you think the bigger you got, the more powerful you kind of... The confidence, yeah. yeah. The confidence. You know, back then I was just like a skinny little kid, second-hand clothes. You know, I didn't know anybody. I was only a brown face in the class. And, you know, I couldn't even talk. You know, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even say my own name. And I'd get a piss taken at me, people... 
doing this, doing that. And I'm okay, I took all this shit, man. You got you got to take the shit. How about if you're writing a lot book, would you go right back to the start? Yes. Beginning so they, they, from they, day one, yeah. from when I was three years old. That's my first memory. And just talk about the full yeah. autobiography, the full yeah. life right up until now. Yeah, yeah. It's been an interesting yeah. fucking book. That's how I want to do it. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Is that That's the plan for the future? It. Yeah, why not? I ain't doing nothing else. Are you going to go to uh, the prisons? Are you going to do this with the young kids, the uh, YOs? Well, that I would like to do, you know. Uh, yes. See, when you wrote the book yeah. and you speak about other people. If the, anybody... Want to contact me on this, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, contact was, them. How, you know? do, they, how yeah. do they contact you? Contact me easy on Facebook. Facebook. You know? Chat Sandra easy, you know? Uh -huh. And, uh, well, yeah, I'd give them a talk. Do you think there was any, there would have been any backlash if you mentioned anybody in the books? Were you worried about speaking about anybody's name? Or? Not in this one, because this is all Spanish. Yeah? Yeah. It's all the guys I met in Spain. But if I do a new one, it's people that I know in England. Or still maybe I can say Newcastle, yeah. they're still active. And they haven't been brought to justice, and I can't really mention them. Yeah, because you're just incriminate yourself. Yeah. Are you still in, and them. Are you still in friends with a lot of people from the UK? Yeah, yeah. Is well, that yeah. a worry though? You you suck back in and you it's easy to to, to let slip now. Well, no, because I'm not in there f for the money no more. You know, mm -hmm. back then it was all about the money. You know, now I'm okay. I'm comfortable. You enjoying life a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Like I say, man, I appreciate you coming up and telling your story, man. It's a very interesting story. No doubt the people in Glasgow and the UK will love it, man. And I wish you all the best for the future, brother. Yeah. And if anybody's want to get in co contact with Chet, check out his Facebook, get his book on Amazon, Kindle. Amazon, yeah. Kindle and read it because it's fucking madness. And uh, a pleasure. Okay, Cheers, James. Brother. And Cheers, you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Nice one. And we're off. Boom.